Thank you for joining us today on Something to Think About with Pastor Mike, where the topics can range from current events, historical perspectives, practical Bible application, to whatever's on his mind today. People have stereotypes of what it means to be a Christian, and one thing's for sure, Pastor Mike loves breaking those stereotypes. Pastor Mike Hasseltine is the senior pastor of Maranatha Church with campuses in Forest Lake and Chisago, Minnesota. With over 40 years of practical pastoral ministry, Pastor Mike challenges us to be real people, loving a real God, right in the midst of all our real lives. Now, here's Pastor Mike. Yay, good morning, everybody. Happy November 1st. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we are. And there's snow on the ground. Man, we got hit last night. Man, I tell you what, I, I realize I've lived my, my whole life in Minnesota, but, oh, man, I'm such a wimp. Just transition stuff, you know, it's kind of tough. Mm-hmm. Well, I I wonder if we're going to get a little ease into it because this will melt. That's true. It's going to melt right away. So. Hey, I want to send a, a greetings to all those of you who are in your drive time, you're driving. Thanks for tuning in. Those of you who are sitting in your cubicles, you're already at work. Great to have you. Um, moms or dads at home, you get kids running around underfoot. Thanks for tuning in. We have... I'm looking forward to it. We have a great guest with us this morning, so we'll be introducing him in just a few more minutes, but I want to just touch base on a couple things. Man, we had a hollow uh, sugar rush, mm-hmm. kind of a Halloween alternative kind of a deal, and we do it outside. We had 1,300 attendees. Yeah, huge community outreach. 100 workers mm-hmm. to put it on. It was a great day. Yeah. And we gave away just uh, well over $6,000 worth of candy. I wonder how many pounds that is. I mean, I don't even know, but I saw it being delivered when it came. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's hard to comprehend. Wow. However, at the same time, when I say it's a lot, candy's expensive, mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm. not that much when you think about over six thousand dollars. Right. So it's kind of crazy, mm-hmm. but yeah, everybody had a great time. Thanks for all those who uh, worked hard to make that event happen. It was pretty cool. Very very cool. Um, kind of fun. Mm-hmm. So let's let's touch right on because I want to get to our our guest sure. uh, as soon as possible. But I love I, I love these national days, whatever they are. I love making fun of them, picking on them. Oh, before I do though, yeah, give you a quick update on our station manager Jenny Gaskill, oh, yeah. the pickleball killer. Yeah, <laughs> the pickleball killer. Um, she's not injured anybody in two weeks. You know, we should have one of those signs up that say this many days since somebody's had an injury. No, 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 not since since she's hurt somebody. Since she's hurt somebody. She has not got hurt it. anybody in the last two weeks. You know why? Because uh, she's hurt. Uh-huh. She got injured, and she can't be playing, so nobody else is going to get hurt now. Mm-hmm. No more liability concerns. People don't have to wear their eye goggles. She's in a boot. Uh, well, she's, she's on the sideline, man. Yeah. She's Oh, but I tell you what, we should almost warn people when she comes back. I, she is so anxious. She is breathing. Than fire. Ready she's, to go. Oh man, I can see it. Well, she's she's got fire in her eyes. And in the meantime, she can she's coaching. Yeah, that's probably which, true. Which might be more dangerous. Who yeah, knows? it's kind of no. yeah, it's kind of wild. No, very fun. I'm glad <laughs> yes. she's doing better. Yes, and uh, our producer this morning is Jay. How you doing, Jay? Um, I'm I'm trying to well, not public math, but I'm I'm trying to. I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're doing producer stuff, stuff I see. When the half hour point is. I'm going to start <laughs> there you go. all over again. <laughs> there you go. Starting to do that producer stuff. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here. Mm. Okay, so Robin, tell us, what is some of the national events or things happening today? I tell you, we've, we've got some interesting ones today. So today, the first Friday in November, is National Fountain Pen Day. National Fountain Pen? Yeah, do you like writing with a fountain pen? I have a son who collects them. Really? Uh, it's a small collection, but he enjoys writing with them. You know, back in my college day, I actually used a fountain pen for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I did, but mm-hmm. it was probably the, the cool thing to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They have a yeah, different... a lot of work. I'm sure glad they invented the Bic. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, what's next? Okay. Um, it's a uh, uh, National Biologic Coordinators Day. I thought you said that there's a lot of interesting ones today. Yeah, we'll get to all oh, of that. But oh, this, okay. This these, one here is, like, strange, well, bizarre. It's, uh, so biologic coordinators help patients um, as they take living organisms that treat their disease. Isn't that fascinating? Okay, okay, so on to... Yeah. <laughs> whatever. On I'm to... Like, yeah, okay, whatever. whatever. Okay. Crickets. Today's National Cinnamon Day. 
Oh, cinnamon's good. Cinnamon's good. It's good for you, too. It's what I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. National Calzone Day. Calzone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I had one of those. Mm -mm. Yeah, so that's a national day. National Jersey Friday. Jersey Friday. Wear your jersey. Wow, you know, we have a Jersey Sunday Mm -hmm. every year in January during the playing of the Super Bowl. Right. So we encourage everybody... um, to wear a jersey of some sort. It doesn't matter. It could be soccer, baseball, hockey, what, whatever. Whatever team you Football, yeah. racing, yeah. yeah. Um, National Deep Fried Clam- Clams Day. <gasps> National Ooh. Deep Fried Clams Day. Oh, man. For our listeners, I love deep fried clams. Fried clams. Not not like you get around Minnesota. You go to a restaurant and you get, you know, order Fried clams. All you get is the little clam strip. You don't get the whole clam. I would never know. You got to go out east, man. You got to get the bag. <laughs> you know, we call it the bag or the sack of, of the clam. You got to get the whole clam. <laughs> well, you know, I have to admit, it, it does. Way it, better it, than it, it, it is. And you explain uh, it you like know, that. you said. It is, it is a, a, a bag of goo, you know, when you bite it in your mouth. Yeah. But I love, oh, man, I love clams. Oh, I can eat a pile of them. Somebody should check your temperature right about now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm. I'm getting all worked up about thinking I had some I could have some fried clams there you go find a place to do that today. oh man right. also it's national cook for your pets day no nope, ain't gonna happen <laughs> I'm not cooking for my pet <laughs> national vinegar day Ooh, that's kind of sour. There you go. Okay, so those are some of the days for today. But before okay. we meet again on next Friday, there are a couple of days that you need to know about. Um, one of them is uh, National Nachos Day. This coming Wednesday is National Nachos Day. So mark your calendars and prepare for that Okay, so Wednesday, all the staff, we're, we're mostly all around here. We should have yeah, nachos that day. we should have day. nachos. The other one is... Let's you know, work on that. We could combine that. We could, because the day after that, next Thursday, is National Men Make Dinner Day. National Men, Men Make, Make Dinner, dinner Day. Hey, I, you know, our guest here makes some killer dinners. Yeah. So again, we'll have to get back to that, too. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, because we're we'll going to introduce him in a minute. Um, because, yeah, he's a, he's a master in the kitchen, mm-hmm. in the grill. Um, I think his wife is more so, mm-hmm. but he really enjoys it, participates it. He likes to kill things and grill them. Kill it and grill it. That's kind of what he likes to do. It's fun when you can have that be a, a couple's hobby. That's true. You know? So it's really funny about the men grill it, or what is it? Men make dinner day. Men make dinner day. Yeah. Man, I made some killer soup last week, and then I just got so excited. I don't have a recipe. I just started throwing things together and make mm-hmm. soup. I made a big old pot of soup. How old were those things night. in your refrigerator when you were pulling that together? Because you do they? have a reputation for like eating just past <laughs> the goodness. Yes, I do. Last week at the office here, I had some milk. You did and Oreos, and it was the last that milk should have been used because after I got done dunking my Oreos in there, because the Oreos masked the flavor. So then I took a sip. Like to drink the milk, and I'm like, oh God, this is this is nasty, this is bad. Yeah. So I threw the rest of the milk away. Which is so unusual. I know because well, you you're know. usually pretty diehard save the food deal. I do. I like. To, I don't like to throw food away. I get that's a as long as that's not dangerous to your health. I think that's great. But. Mm-hmm. I, 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 it hasn't affected, me, affected <laughs> me at all. You can't see him, but yeah, he's twitching is, right now. Yeah, that's right. It's radio. <laughs> you can't radio. see. Oh, that's just funny. Oh, man. Okay, so, you know, we have a really special guest. Man, I've known him for years already. It's like amazing years. Um, so, in the introduction, you hear about, you know, I'm the pastor, senior pastor of Maranatha. We do have another campus. It's in Chisago City. And the campus pastor from Chisago City is with us this morning, Pastor. Pastor Bill Good morning. Henry. Woo-hoo. How you doing? Good morning. I'm great. It's good Fan- to be here. Fantastic. Yeah. So what were you thinking about the grill it, kill it, and grill it? That's kind of your MO, isn't it? I, yeah, that's. I love to do it. Actually, as I was driving here this morning, I was thinking, why am I doing this? This is the morning to be sitting out in the woods. <laughs> this is yeah, right. the storm yesterday. It's cold today. Uh-huh. But Man, yeah, no, we, lo- we love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, it's really wild. I understand that you got a new grill. I got and a smoker. What's the first thing you grilled or smoked on? that thing venison backstrap we had a roast when we butcher we butcher on deer and so we leave the backstrap hole yep we don't cut it into steaks when we freeze it so we had a six eight inch wow roast and so we just a quick marinade and then threw that on the smoker for an hour and a half or so like you said just yep. low heat man that thing was just slice it mm. real thin sear it a little bit before you put it on 
out of this world. Out of this world. Oh, oh my good goodness, it was guys. crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can't wait to keep. I can't wait to smoke things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. you, you start throwing everything out of there. Uh, Jay, uh, man, you've had a smoker for years. And, you know, yeah. You've been smoking. And you, you talk about the fact you can make cookies in there and frozen oh, yeah. pizza. Cookies, muffins. Uh, I, you know, we used to go on the road a lot uh, with, with my job. I just take that along. We, that was our oven. But you could you could put anything in there. No and kidding. frozen pizza is phenomenal in those. Really? Things. Wow. In the smoker. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you think about it, you go to a, it's a, just a an oven. real pizza joint yeah. like out in New York. Oh. It's all wood fired. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just That's ovens. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool, man. So you get that smoky flavor. Yeah. You can it, just smoke all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It, it's pretty it's pretty wild. So we have coming up here for as far as church activities, November twenty seventh. It's a Wednesday night, six thirty. It's our Thanksgiving service. It's a big deal. It's a great service. And any of our listeners out there, if you've ever been tempted or curious about Maranatha, I want to invite you. November twenty seventh, Wednesday, six thirty, Thanksgiving service. It'll be about an hour and a half service. Mm-hmm. Um, it is really great service, and you are more than welcome to attend. Um, I have people running to me all the time and they say you know I'm, I'm not a member of your church I'm a Catholic or I'm a Lutheran or I'm a whatever can, can I just come to your church I said absolutely just come visit you know mm-hmm. and Chisago Lakes Campus tell us about some of the things you got going up there man we have a plethora of things for people to do yeah between the campuses you got a lot of options yeah um, let's see well we we also do a Thanksgiving service so for people over in that area same thing the Wednesday before Thanksgiving a service happens there but then uh, I'm excited about this week I'm not gonna give you any details but this weekend, we're actually, uh, because it's the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church weekend, and so yep. we're doing something that I, I haven't done before. I'm actually nervous about it, mm. but because of what we're doing, we're not going to be live streaming this weekend. And so we're trying to mm-hmm. just let people know that if you're going to come in person, this would be the weekend because it's going to be, I think, quite an experience. So we have four services over there, Saturday, 430, and then Sunday, 8, 9, 30, and 11, which is exciting. Um, again, say that again, Saturday at 430, 430 yeah. then Sunday morning at 8 a.m. 8. 9:30 a.m. and 11 a.m. and 11. There yeah. you go. Yep. And but what we're excited about. So obviously everybody knows there's an election coming up on Tuesday. Kind of a big deal. And so what we're doing is on Monday night at the Chicago campus at 6 p.m. We're going to have an hour and a half of just a night of worship and prayer, mm-hmm. where we're just going to sing a variety of songs. It's going to be a pretty informal thing. People can just, you know sit and pray you can stand and worship and pray whatever but it's just going to be from 6 to seven thirty. we're going to have the nursery available so parents with the little littles mm-hmm. we're going to have a place for them but then on sunday or on uh, tuesday election day the fifth we're going to have the church open from 8 a.m to 8 p.m and the whole desire with this is just to give people an opportunity like i know a couple of people they're going to come and spend the whole day in prayer and mm-hmm. fasting mm-hmm. um we want people to just if you go and vote you know on l- your lunch hour you can come and, and pray for 15 minutes 10 minutes yep. come in the evening after work and spend time in prayer well mm-hmm. all of this stuff is happening so right. yeah and and denise and i will be kind of in and out throughout the day but mm-hmm. um i know like james when he gets off uh work and done with school he's going to vote and then come and pray and so it's yeah just to give people an opportunity and this is something for the whole community Mm -hmm. like it's not just a church activity Mm because you know like you said you know there's a lot of believers around um we just want to create an opportunity for people to come and just just be in prayer well you know the puritans had a saying it says when you pray move your feet and so i've been telling everybody in election christians are some of the laziest people Mm. for they've been hogwashed into believing this idea that well christians shouldn't be involved in politics and all that no in a nation like ours our founding fathers found it to be one of the most god-serving honoring things you can do is to be patriotic be involved so you know you can pray all you want but you got to vote too so vote and pray absolutely and i think we ought to really uh, put that into practice and and just really praying for our nation pray for those in authority over you the bible says so absolutely but boy you definitely have got to go out and vote you have to you have to absolutely yeah you absolutely have to vote yeah that's pretty exciting that the doors will be open for people to come yeah 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 and that's kind of the way we've been saying it vote and then come and pray or pray and then go and vote Mm -hmm. you know because i i just agree with you wholeheartedly it's man we we got to do something and for those who have voted early 
Come and spend the time. Yeah, If absolutely. you've got it, just come and spend the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if, even if it's five minutes, 15 even, exactly. minutes, an hour, mm-hmm. it's just an open door. There's going to be people there all day. So it's a safe place. The idea isn't to show how spiritual you are, spiritual no. you are by how long you, you stay no, there. No, Some things, times I think people, like the, people feel like they're going to be judged by, well, you only was here, you know, five minutes. Yeah, he came in, prayed, or she came in, prayed, yep. and then left. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. No pressure for anything else like that. That's no, fantastic. Nothing. Man, always always something happening at Chisago Lakes. You are uh, just one very creative, on fire, in love with Jesus kind of pastor. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. You, you are. Yeah, just, I, you know, I'm a simple guy. Uh, so, well, how have I said, I'm, I'm uh, dug on it. Well, you and I have talked about this. Uh, I, I'm just a simple person, and, and the way I learn it, I don't. I'm not. I'm not super intelligent, or you, you, yeah, I know. And they, you corrected me before when I was saying this stuff. Yes, but here's the deal. That's why I like illustrations. That's why you're I not like, an academician. Yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, but you, yeah. <laughs> but you are very intelligent. You are very, mm-hmm. very intelligent. Yeah, mm-hmm. studious. I don't know. Anyway, I have a hard time learning things, and so then. Mm to show people things that's why these illustrations are so important to me and and mm-hmm. just a simple basic way to communicate because uh like when travis was here i used to say man you got to dumb it down for me like yeah. like use words i understand mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. anyway yeah i love i love what i do i love my job i love uh I, I love the Lord, and I just want people to know Him. You know, mm-hmm. not not just go to church, but to know Him yeah. and mm-hmm. grab hold of that. And for those of you who are listening, and maybe you're not even in the area, you you live in the cities or wherever you're from, way down in Coates, um, but you can go online and and listen to and watch Pastor Bill's services. You just got to go to realchurch.org and then go to the Chisago Lakes campus, yeah. and you will see a pastor who is on fire, and he will shock you oftentimes and just drives the point home with some of the creative theatrical type demonstrations and, and yeah. illustrations you have from the pulpit. Yeah. Sometimes you make a mess of the place. I do, yeah. yeah. Man, you make a mess. Yeah, you can. I, it was funny when I used to come. And a side note, so you can go to realchurch.org, but we also have our own website, which mm. is Miranatha Chisago dot church or com or org or whichever dot you like but yeah maranatha shisago dot church um but yeah so it was funny when i would come over here and and uh and get the opportunity to share a message on a sunday the guys would give me a hard time so i'd come walking through the doors and there they'd be standing there with a mop bucket and a fire yeah. extinguisher <laughs> yeah, and the, the, yeah 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 mm-hmm. just like yeah pastor bill's coming it's gonna, gonna be a mess now. yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but, yeah, I mean, for good. frame of reference, there's been flamethrowers. There's been, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I appreciate the uh, effectiveness of yeah. the object lessons that you provide. I still have them. I imagine you hear that quite a bit because yeah. I know there are messages that you've preached. I can still see them when I close my eyes for how they've impacted yeah. my life. So yeah. I imagine you hear that quite a bit. Yeah, you do. And actually, even as we were kind of getting things in order for this weekend, you know, and obviously I have help with everything. You know, Denise is a tremendous help and support. And mm-hmm. so yesterday, me and Denise and James are doing some stuff and getting things ready. And, and it takes work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's what I told him is like, you know, this is why a lot of people don't do this. Mm-hmm. It's work. It's effort. This, this takes work. And, and, you know, this could be a tangent, but I think that's part of the problem is there's so many people in ministry that just think it's just easy. And, it's work. I mean, it's not not just the the people part, which is work, but but like it just is work. Mm-hmm. You know, labor. Take, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But you think about Paul; he worked. Yeah. I mean, he worked his butt off. Yep. Yes, I've I've listened to pastors complain all the time about you know their schedule and how they work. Hey, you need to realize the people sitting in your congregation. Oh man, they work hard too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they work really hard. Hey, anytime it's a hundred degree day. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting in my office. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a guy on a roof. That's yeah. right. You know, yeah. and like mm-hmm. part or of digging the ditch or laying blocks. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you look at like we have our our sectional meetings monthly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> part of our job is so I get to go sit around with other people and talk about the Bible and pray together and mm-hmm. eat a meal together and share passion. That's part of our job. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. But but the other stuff too, the special events and things that you do, um, that we do, it, it is work, and that's why I agree. A lot of churches don't do it because you you got to set up, you got to prepare, you got to move this. It's a lot of labor. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like even like Sugar Rush. 
Oh, yeah. It's those kind of things. Some churches don't do it. It's like when they start thinking about all they got to do, it's like, oh, it's just not, yeah. they start thinking, is it worth it? Yeah. You know? Hey, ministry is a lot of work. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a blast. Mm -hmm. And it can be fun work. I love yeah. that. Um, and this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, comma, and his commandments are not burdensome. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. We get to. That's yep. right. Amen. That is really true. Okay, so we're going to take a, a break here in just a little bit, and then I'm going to come to tell us how you became a follower of Jesus, and then tell us a little bit about your family, your two lovely daughters, and, you know, that kind of thing. So we're going to come back to that in just a minute. See you in a minute. You're listening to Something to Think About with me, Pastor Mike, a production of WAJC, Your Life Radio on 88.1 and 91.7 FM. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions or comments about today's show, email us at wajc at yourliferadio.com. If you're ever in the Forest Lake area, I'd love to personally invite you to join us for a Sunday morning service at 9.30 a.m. or Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. There's something for everyone. Something to Think About with Pastor Mike is a production of WAJC Your Life Radio, which is owned and operated by Maranatha Assembly of God in Forest Lake, Minnesota. You can find more information on the web at realchurch.org. Now, back to Something to Think About. For those of you just tuning in, we have a very, very, very special guest with us, Pastor Bill Headley. He is from our Chisago Lakes campus, and he's been around Maranatha just an awfully long time. A long time. A long time. Yeah. You were you were young when I, I first I saw you. <laughs> no, <laughs> by comparison, no, you'll always be young. Yeah, by comparison, yeah. That's but right. no, you That's are right. not young. But you are young in heart yeah. and spirit, and you're not that old. Yeah. yeah. So, Bill, tell us uh, just a little bit about your story. I mean, how did you? What was your life like, and how did you come to Maranatha? And and give us a point of reference in a sense. How old were you too? So. Uh, let's see. So it was uh, early 2000s. Uh, I was, let's see, late 90s, early 2000s was when I first came to Maranatha. And, and you'll remember the date because it was actually the, my first experience was Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames at the old building. Okay. And that was the only time I was ever in that old building. Yep. Now, so I grew up in this area. And Maranatha was a cult to, uh, to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it was just... It's that weird church. It's that weird church. Yeah. 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 So... Because you were, you were from a... Um, uh, um, I grew up Lutheran. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I was very involved at that church, and my mom and dad were great and everything. And then uh, I moved out just because I had all the answers, so I figured I would move out. Well, that's when I started in the drugs and the drinking heavy, and I started smoking, and my life went that direction. Well, so then... Fast forward a few years, I'm on the drugs and, and, and the drinking, and uh, a couple of people that were attending here in, the, in that state that I was in, they invited me to go to Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames, which is one of the things that, like, I could camp on this for an hour mm -hmm. because it's that idea of uh, somebody invited me when I was at my worst. Like, I, I could almost confidently say in my very, very deepest, darkest, steeped in, in the drug addiction and in the family stuff, but they invited me to their church because they knew that I would be welcome in their church. And so back, you know, we talk about ministry. Yeah. It's like that's the kind of church that I want to be a part of mm -hmm. is a church where you're welcome. Yeah. And, and where someone feels like, hey, my friend is, is steeped in a meth addiction and life is falling apart. But I know that I can invite him to my church and the people will welcome him when he walks in. Mm -hmm. Look, looking terrible, smelling terrible because the drug, I mean, everything. And just to be loved. And that was the first time that I ever, I was on a couple day bender on meth. And when at the end of that Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames, I don't know who it was that said it, um, but I felt the Lord calling me forward. And so I went up in that state and that was the first time I, I responded. You know, of course, my life, that was the beginning, but it was a process. So, so then kept going through the drugs, eventually um, started cleaning up from there. And now you're in this building, the new building. Was that 01, 2000 or 01? 2000. Okay, so it wasn't long after you were in here, yep. then uh, started coming here. And immediately just got involved in the messages were, you know, they resonated with me and just felt loved and accepted and welcomed. And it wasn't long then where um, I was invited to play on the worship team because I played guitar a little bit. So... 
I was able to be on the worship team and then got hooked up with Travis and, and went through the Alpha uh, program and then started leading worship for the Alpha program. And then over the course of years, eventually led it and spoke at it and shared and just that started the whole process. And then um, Travis, and he said, hey, I think, you know, you should consider taking these Berean classes not knowing what for because i had a pretty good job high paying job and at the time anyway yeah. <laughs> no and just to, to let people know berean classes you know we, we yeah, say yeah, berean yeah. classes yeah. That, that's a higher study level like college type education yes. stuff ministry yeah. related kind of deeper understanding of th the books of the bible and all that kind of stuff yeah 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 to kind of get in the direction of you know if you wanted to get credentialed or not just get education whatever mm -hmm. So I was a truck driver before this. So I spent hours and hours by myself in a truck, which I loved. And and it was great, making good money again. So then all of a sudden one day, get a call from Pastor Mike. And and we had had interaction, but, you know, hey, hey you know, I want to go to lunch. Now I'm like freaking out because I'm guilty of a lot of things. You know, it's like, oh my gosh. So, Why do we go there all the time right away? We always go there. Like, I don't know. What, what did I do? Crazy. I'm in trouble. I know. Absolutely. So anyway, so invites us to lunch and it's and then that was the invitation to, you know, you're doing these things. I hear you're taking these classes. Would you consider this? You know, and that was the becoming a youth pastor. And that was the, the step into youth ministry. And again, this is this could be a whole topic because it's like um, like somebody somebody even knowing my past still believed in me because you believe in the power of God mm -hmm. to change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like that's what we should be doing as churches, you know. So that was in June of 2005 is when I started here as a youth pastor. Wow. 2005. Yeah. Yeah, man, time has just flown by, hasn't it? It is, it is crazy. Nineteen years, man, it has flown by. Yeah. And then I forget when the district came to me and asked me to take over the Chisago Church. Oh eight, I think it was. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. So oh eight, and and back then, um, as things were kind of in chaos. I went up there for just a short time. I was the one always going up there. Then we had a rotating, yep. some of the pastors here rotating, going up there. And then eventually we made the switch to, yeah, we need something permanent. We need some stability, somebody to provide some direction up there. And that's when uh, you were in charge of being that person. Yeah, yeah. And that was the, it was like the year of 2010. I was there every Sunday, but I was still the youth pastor here. And then that was the making the decision. It was September of 11, I think when Jody took over the youth position here and then yep. I went there full time. Yep. And then yeah, it's just been a journey since a lot of ups and downs and personal things and, you know, professional things and just all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But but now here we are, four services and knocking on the door of three hundred people every weekend mm -hmm. and involved in and in, you know, just engaged with the community. So yeah, it's been an, a crazy thirteen years. 19 years. Well, I mean, oh, uh, at, yeah, I was like, like no, 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 don't from, cut my phrase, you're mad. Yeah, no, no, no I'm from, with you now, yeah, at Chisago. Uh, at Chisago, yeah, yeah, yep. you know, the, yeah. you know the, the senior pastor there. Um, yeah. Yeah, 13 years, like, phew. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, and to look at where we are. Well, that, and again, this is another thing. You know, I remember first going over there and 15, 20 people being there and the place was empty 10 minutes after the service let out. And now there's times I'll stand by that, that front door looking at the lobby and just watching the the community be formed i i don't like sometimes like I don't, I don't nobody needs to talk to me i'm good it's like you just see what god has done in that place mm -hmm. and the community and the friendships and 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 the family i mean yeah you know my brother has made a comment about you know the sanctuary of a church that's where we worship, but the church meets in the lobby. Yeah, that's a great thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's where the that's where the church meets. Yeah, is in the lobby. And you're right. Unfortunately, a lot of churches when it's done, phew, everybody vanishes. Yeah, yeah. You know, around here, like up there, you almost got to be kicking people out after you know, church has been gone for a while. People, the security wants to go home. Yep. Hey, you guys, y'all you, you got to go now. Yeah. You, you don't know? have to go home, but you can't stay here. That's right. You <laughs> yeah. don't have to go home, yep. but, but you can't stay here. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, that man, that time just flies by really, really fast. It is amazing. Amazing. Now, yeah. your two little girls. 
Little or girls. so little anymore. Yeah, 24 I mean, and when you were showing no. up, man, they were just man, they were just little girls. I remember dropping them off at the nursery. Yeah, yeah isn't yeah, that crazy? So what are, what are they up yeah, to now? They're doing great. They both uh, they work as vet techs uh, at a local animal hospital and clinic, and uh, yeah, they're they're doing great. They're hardworking kids. You know, their life hasn't been easy, and they've stayed focused. and And I love it. So just the other day, uh, I was at my mom and dad's. And I had to move one of their cars. And I got in to start the car, and, and I get in and start it, and KTIS is playing. Mm. And I just I, I just love it. You know, you get in, and there's Christian music playing on the kids' radio stations, and mm. they're singing the songs. And yep. it's just a – but they're just I, – I tell you, I look at them, and it's like, man, they're just exceptional adult women. Yep, they're they just, are. My dad just had a knee replacement. Mm. And so major surgery, so they're at home. And, and my kids, because they work locally, they, they'll pop over there almost daily for lunch or to see them. The way that they're wanting to take care of my mom and dad. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, wow. it's just this. Do they bring leftover drugs from the... Uh, yeah, the, vets? Yeah, yeah, the horse yeah. pills. The horse pills, <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, this is going to make you feel better. This will help, Grandpa. This will help, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, just, uh, you know, your first time as a parent of 24, 25-year-olds, and so you to experience. Totally different relationship with, yeah. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they're they're just exceptional. You know, they're just, they're they're great, great girls, and they're strong, and they stayed focused. I mean, they had four-year degrees by the time they were 20. They're intelligent. They, like I said, they just work hard through some major life distractions, and they're doing good. They didn't, they didn't use circumstances as an excuse to just mm-hmm. bow out. Mm-hmm. They... They stayed focused mm-hmm. and worked hard. Yep, and worked hard, and, and they, they still did. do. Yeah, yep. yeah. I'm very, very. My, yeah, life is just good. I mean, I my wife is just over the top amazing. I mean, the, her support for ministry, um, my hobbies, like like she gets excited. Like I come in from hunting. Like even last night, I went and sat in the, in the stand. I come in. Well, before I go, she makes me a thermos of tea. Yeah, and then I come in, and she's got. You know, food ready for me, and, and it's like she's she's never upset that I I'm out enjoying my hobby. Mm-hmm. She supports it, you know. Mm-hmm. And ministry, uh, there's nobody that works as hard as she does. Mm-hmm. That's mean, true. You you guys are oh, a dynamic it's duo. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm agree. not just you know, saying that and blowing smoke up yeah. your skirt. It's it's yeah. like oh my gosh. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's uh, she Passionate. she works hard. Yeah. I keep telling people, like we talk about the last 13 years at Chisago, and you know, going back five or six, people will never know how much her impact or, you know, what the full extent of her yeah, impact mm-hmm. yeah, is on that church. Mm-hmm. You know, her hard work, her support of me. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like like this, mm-hmm. you know, getting up on a Friday morning early. Yeah. There was nothing, n- nothing negative about mm-hmm. getting up to come in. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, your day off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she didn't like, oh, where are no, you going? Nothing. It, yeah, and, complaining. Yeah. We And two of the grandkids stayed over last night. So she's getting up and getting them ready and bringing them to school. Nothing negative. It's like she just gets it, man. Mm-hmm. She and ministry mindset and soup. Mm-hmm. Oh, soup. Oh, she's the queen of soup. Ooh, yeah. When you talked about Robin, when you said you know, just getting stuff out of the fridge and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what she can do. That mm-hmm. you know. So she probably does it a little bit earlier on in its <laughs> she, lifespan. She doesn't. Oh, oh, she doesn't oh, wait for the extra. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Carving the mold hey, off the top. Hey, once you cut the mold off, it's fine. <laughs> that's only cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's okay. so good. That's yeah. that, that is really fantastic. So, you know, ministry is uh, incredibly rewarding, but not always. And and like you said, um, you know, Denise has been such an integral part that people will never know yeah. because you are you and i as pastors we get all the credit we get you know we they see us up front they you know we all get all the fanfare yeah. but i don't do half the things that i get credit for yeah it's dedicated workers and staff mm-hmm. people around here that are working hard some people are working so hard and so important to the success of the church and most people don't even know their name yeah mm-hmm. they don't see them and the, so, the greatness of that person's heart is they're okay with it. Yeah. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like they're not doing it. Like that's Denise Full recognition. all the way. Yeah. Denise, even though she's our worship leader and she's in front of people all the time, she she always wants to be behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. You know, like like just 
I it, don't know to speak yeah. because that's the heart, you yeah. know, the genuineness of wanting to serve the Lord and serve mm-hmm. the people. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm just kind of curious. So you are so energized and there's some pastors out there, you know, that are frustrated, they're tired, they're weary. Um, tell, tell me about some about the things that you enjoy most about ministry. What, what, what really just excites you? What, what keeps you cranked? Hmm. Well, I think I think part of it is is I mean I don't know how this sounds, but it's it's my story. Mm-hmm. Like I know I know that there are Bill Headleys out there that just need someone to believe in them, and to know that even though you did all these things in your past, you can still you can still love God and you can still serve God, and 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 even above that, I think is to know His love, and that's I think the burning passion I have. It's to it's to energize the people sitting in our churches because it, it, it's an army of believers sitting there. Yep. And, and way too many of them feel like uh, because they struggled with whatever it is, you know, you name it, that for some reason now they're counted out. And and I just I, I'm fired up to just see you, you can, you know, um, men and women, you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And God, like here, look. I can't believe sometimes when I'm standing there on a Sunday and I look out, like I'll have to just pause and swallow that lump in my throat that I get to do what I get to do. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's, I'm, I'm as ordinary of a person as there can be. Yeah. I was a truck driver. I, 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 I sat in the truck listening to worship music. The first time I ever smoked in tongues was in the semi. Yeah. Cigarette in my hand. Mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> like, but like, that's what I want to tell yeah. people is like, exactly. It's the real, it's, it's just, this is, this is it right here, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's what, that's what gets me excited is that, that, that guy that comes in off the street, that lady that's struggling. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, he loves you so much. You know, there's people listening right now who they can relate to what you're just describing. Yeah. Cause I think of myself the same way. Hey, I was just a nobody. Yeah. And God said, hey, I want you to preach. And I, I even told him, I said, I don't know what a preacher does. Yeah. I don't know. How, you know, so and so your story, the same thing. So there are people out there listening right now that have made some poor choices. They are feeling discouraged. And I think sometimes they're, they're reaching out to Christian radio. And this, they're hoping that there's going to be a magical change in their life. Um, and this is not magical, but this can be the change in your life. Absolutely. For yeah. you to understand and realize that Jesus loves you, even in the midst of all your failure, all of your poor mistakes. And you even right now, I can hear somebody saying, yeah, but I knew better. I was raised in the It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. You need to realize that there is always a fresh start. There is always new hope that God loves you. And God not only can, but he wants to use mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Yeah. You, little old you. Yeah, yeah. And and there's somebody out there that you can impact their life, you know? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, he, I, I think, because we're recently, we're going through the book of Acts at Chisago. Yeah. And so we're, we're you know, we get, get through a point where Paul is in jail and the Lord shakes it and the gate opens up and they stay put and... And the jailer gets saved, and and the jailer does all these. Now, now, where's the the effect? Well, there's so many of us. We're the jailer. We, because I would assume that jailer was a part of whipping and beating and yeah, shackling right, yeah. and all, all this right. stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, now he hears the gospel, and that God loves him and salvation through Jesus. All of these things. And it's like mm-hmm. there was a change in his life. Now he's cleaning it, Paul's wounds, and he's feeding them a meal, and his family gets baptized. Like. Like, I'm the jailer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, and he gave me that chance. You know, the leper that Jesus touches, the blind guy that he gives sight to, the, I mean, that's what he does. He sees those that we walk past. And Mm -hmm. and to the person listening, he sees you. You might feel like nobody does. Jesus sees you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he's reaching out. And and to the Christian, you need to share the message because it's the message that changes people's lives. And the message doesn't change. No, the message hasn't changed. And our society today, uh, you know, the jailer didn't want to hear the message. Sometimes we're going to share the message with people and they're going to not like us. They're going to hate us. Hey, the Apostle Paul threw Christians in jail. But yet it was the gospel that changed his life. Absolutely. So you need to realize that the gospel changes people's lives. Corinthians, Paul writes, for the out of the the foolishness of what we preach, Mm -hmm. God changes lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lives forever will be different. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and then talking about Corinthians. So, uh, you know, people use the term life verse. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for those, it's just a verse that means a lot to you, change your life. So that's Second Corinthians five seventeen for me. Mm. And there was a point where coming out of the drug addiction, getting saved, feeling the love of the Lord in a place like this, but wrestling with my past and mm-hmm. being called names at the place I worked, like like it was crazy. But that that verse, uh, therefore, whoever's in Christ Jesus is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. That was stenciled on my dining room wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm like huge because mm-hmm. I needed to be reminded of that and uh, and now it's been you know over 20 years since I got saved and and working in the church I still need to be reminded of that I would say not quite daily but at least weekly yeah. mm-hmm. because it's not like everything it's not like you don't remember your mistakes it's not like people don't remind you of your mistakes there's people in our in the community over there they don't think I should be doing what I'm doing mm-hmm it's like, well, God does. So right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I remind people, hey, if you uh, want to complain about me, talk to my boss. Yeah. I told him I wasn't going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't going to do it very good. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Yeah. And they remind me of that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, how many, uh, yeah, I just go through the Bible and how many went through yeah. all of our man-made things. Yeah. It, it was God that changed their lives, you know, the, the, the Samaritan woman, mm-hmm. because she went back into that town, changed Mm-hmm. The, the town, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. no formal training. I guess it's the message. It's mm-hmm. the message. And Praise the message. God. Does, that was our the that's the title to last weekend's sermon at Chisago. The message. The message doesn't change because yeah. everywhere Paul went, every mm-hmm. town, every culture, skin color, language, it doesn't matter. Mm-mm. The message doesn't change. Yep. Mm-hmm. Death, burial, and resurrection. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's salvation oh, Jesus Christ. in Jesus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's, that's it. And that's the gospel that Paul preached everywhere he told people of the good news. About Jesus. Yeah. You know? So what I what I hear too, uh, I'll use my words instead of yours. As I'm listening to you, one of the things that excites you, keeps you going, the joy is just this idea of being real and realizing where you were when He found you. So for me, people say the same thing for me after you know 44, almost 45 years of ministry. How come you still have so much energy and you're you're passionate about it? And I always tell them, I've never forgot my salvation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have never forgotten my salvation. Yeah. And I don't take it lightly, especially today when I look around people who are lost and in darkness and they're fierce haters of good. Um, that could have been me mm-hmm. except for the grace of God. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that God sure. pursued me mm-hmm. and overtook me. Yeah. And it's really wild. Yeah. You know, we have a few minutes here left, but Pastor Bill, would you just spend just a, a little bit, just pray for those listeners right now that are feeling possibly unusable or whatever like we were talking about absolutely Would you just yeah. pray absolutely father right now we do we ask that wherever each of these are god that you would just just speak clearly to their heart and father that you would bring someone to their lives someone someone maybe it's this show maybe it's a, a different program a billboard but god that you would reveal yourself to them and father would you draw them to you Help them to know the truth of your word and the truth of your heart and your character. God, that you you do truly desire that none should perish. That you truly can use the ones that so many say are unusable. Father, would you help them to hear your voice through all of the other noise and call them to that place of just a wonderful life change. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your grace, your love, and your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Therefore, if any was in Christ, old things pass away and all become new. Yeah, man. And as we turn to him, it's a new adventure every day. It is. And you all can still love life. You can. We've got to come on again and talk about hunting and fishing. Yeah, and... Well, I thought we'd end up going down that road more, but we just, <laughs> yeah. did, we just never got there. Uh, because I know you are such an avid uh, hunter, and this is kind of, well, all year you find something to be hunting. I, mean, I there, think there's you, some you way gotta. to be doing something. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, but, we talk about Pastor Burnout. I think part of the reason is because we feel like it's wrong to enjoy your life. Yes. you got to have a life. you got to have a life. God, yeah. most, again, oftentimes I complain to God only about one, one of the things I complain about. I try not to, but is, Lord, you put me in a in a vocation where most of these guys are sticks in the mud. Mm. They're they're dead, dull, boring, and I'm like, God, they don't do anything. Well, a lot of Christians suffer from euphoric phobia. Yes, they do. That's a chapter in my book, euphoric mm-hmm. phobia. Mm-hmm. That's Christianity, euphoric phobia. They're afraid of having fun. Yeah. Truly engaged. And if they do, they do it in secret. Yeah. And then they think that they're sinning. Yeah. And, they, and it's like, no, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You know, we are bright lights shining in the midst of a dark and perverse generation. 
People should see the joy in the life. Yeah. And, and I loved when you were given uh, by KTIS, you were given uh, a pastor's appreciation yeah, gift, yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm watching, this, I'm watching this online, right? <laughs> Your your office door opens up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know where I'm going. I do. Yeah, there's yeah. there's dead animals on, yeah. on the wall behind you, yeah. and I'm thinking in today's society that's that's not like uh, politically correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's a you know I can't it's tell. It's your hobby. It's your it's, deal. It's, it's cool. It's, it's like uh, the motorcycles, the skull, and all that stuff in your office. Yeah. The number of guys that walk in and they they go in and it's like. You, a real you're guy. Just, you're just a guy. Just a guy. Yeah. I'm just a guy. Just yeah. a guy. That's it. <laughs> so, I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and God. now I get to go home and smoke things. Yes, good. That's right. <laughs> so we can really legitimately okay, smoke ask you what you smoke today. Leave that out there. Yeah. What you smoking yeah. today, Pastor Bill? God. <laughs> what was it Jay said earlier about dry rub? <laughs> I go home and rub my butt. That's right. Pork butt. Pork butt. Pork butt. Pork yeah, butt. Pork butt. Okay. <laughs> the, so when I saw the picture of that first thing that you uh, smoked on your yeah, grill, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got inspired, so I I ran up to the local grocery store here in town and talked to the butcher. I said, hey, listen, the the, the porter house porter houses out here are like half inch thick. Can you cut me like? you know, inch and three quarters to two inch. He looked at me, he goes, do you want two inch? I go, yeah, make him two inch. He came out with these two steaks, two porterhouses, two inches thick. Oh man. So that next day, that's what I cooked on the grill. On oh, the smoker. Really? I smoked those and oh man. I bet it was delicious. They, it was delicious. Yeah. I have to admit, the venison was very, very, I know what a tenderloin uh, and a backstrap, backstrap tastes like. Yeah, oh that. man, I, on the smoker. Yeah, it, I got it. Because I had them. The same thing. The, oh. All the venison I've eaten in my life, never have I had smoked venison. And this was oh. really good. Oh, my God. Sear it a little bit, throw it yeah. on. You're oh. going to fall in love with that smoker. I, I dig it, man. Gonna... I'm excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our listeners are all wondering, hmm, God, I'm getting hungry. Is it yeah, lunchtime yeah, yet? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not lunchtime yet. It's really not lunchtime. But, hey, it's great to have you join us. I hope that you would uh, share it with your friends. Tell them about the radio station. Tell them that... Uh, Sometimes there's interesting stuff. Sometimes there's really crazy, stupid stuff. But it's fun to mm -hmm. tune in and listen mm -hmm. just to see what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. Pastor Bill, hey, thanks for being uh, our guest today. Wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. I, I'm just wondering which category I just fell in. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to connect with you at the uh, Chisago Lakes yes. campus, what is that web address again? The website, maranathachisago.church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also on YouTube, Maranatha Chisago Lakes, Facebook, Maranatha Chisago Lakes. Um, yeah, and you can get in touch and see all of our stuff on, on the website or on those other social media things. Yeah. I encourage you to tune in. Check it out. Uh, an absolutely fantastic pastor. Loves God, loves his people, loves the community, and loves to serve God. Inspiring. Praise God. Thanks. You all have a great weekend. See you next Friday. Thanks for tuning in today to Something to Think About with Pastor Mike. Please join us right here each Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. If you have questions or comments about today's show, email wajc at yourliferadio.com. You can hear more from Pastor Mike at Maranatha's website, realchurch.org, on the Messages and Media tab. See you next time.